Gola and Matam is also known as Gilawapa Z. Umanakashiwapa Zambia. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe so that each time I upload videos, you will be notified that Gilawapa Z uposts a poka video. She has posted a video. In this video, I will be sharing with you Rachel Botter's ordeal in the Netherlands. I will tell you in my next video who Rachel Botter is. For now, watch this video. Good morning, everybody. Facebook people, Instagram people, Twitter people, everybody that's on social media. My name is Rachel. Rachel Botter. I come from Zambia. Um... I live in the Netherlands now for almost eight and a half years. Yeah, I have three boys. Just had a baby recently, a couple of weeks old now. I'm here making this video because of something that's very important and that, that's been bothering me for a long time now. And all this while I've just been sitting on it and just trying to see if it's going to go away and that I'm able to move on with my life but it's been very difficult last year in the end uh, 2019 I recently lost my mother just at the end of the year meet we should say so and after that I lost my grandmother which was very very hard for me because I'm very far away from my family I got to go for the funeral but it was still hard because yeah, family is important as we all know. The reason why I'm making this video is because I want to tell my story and I'm hoping that somebody is going to watch this and I'm hoping that somebody is going to listen and maybe do something about it because it's been bugging me for two years now. I'm going to put my phone down. When I arrived in Holland... First, I came to Holland because I fell in love with a Dutchman when we were working together in Zambia. And I decided, okay, he doesn't move, I will move this side for him. And I'm very happy. I love my husband. I love my family. I moved here for him, especially just for him because I could have my family and my life, everything in Zambia. But I came here because I love my husband and I wanted to start a life and I want to to raise our children in an environment where we both feel like, okay, we agree on this position. I moved here to Holland and it was not easy because you had to learn the language first before you could even do anything. I did. I learned the language. I went to school. I got an education, got a diploma in the Zoro, and I started working in the healthcare. Working in the healthcare was an experience I will never forget because it taught me something that I never even really took that serious because I live in an open world of of love and everybody is the same and we all have to show love and respect for one another. That's how I believe. I worked in the Zoro for a company called Lawrence for three months and that was the worst three months of my life. I worked for for a company that protects discrimination and that's the thing I'm about to talk about. Sorry, forgive me if I'm all over the place with how I explain my story, but it's a lot of emotions to hold back to explain this story. When I worked in the Zorro, there were two Dutch families that didn't like me. I had to take care of eight people at my Afdelin, at my department. And two of those people, their daughter and their wife, just didn't like the fact that I was black. That was the problem, because I was black. They would come at my job any day, any time they feel like, and just bully me. They would call me names, nigger, black nigger. Go back where you came from. What are you doing in our country? We don't want any niggers here. They would do that. Like it's just a game. And I took it for a long time. My job didn't do nothing for me. In this whole process of what happened to me, 
I went to the police to report what was happening to me at work. And the police did not help me as I thought they would help me. Because if discrimination is a, is a crime, why are we discriminating in Holland? The fact that I was black and my, 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 my Bavona's family, they would come every day to kiss me out and say and discriminate and even make me leave the room so that the family can stay in the place where I'm working. And after the family leaves, I go back. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that you work so hard and do everything right to, to just fit in an environment where it's a difficult environment for people to open up? You get a job. You do your job with all your heart. My job is something that you have to do only if you have a heart for it. You can't do it if you don't have a heart. You take care of people. You wash people. You see people in the most vulnerable way that all of us would be ashamed. It's not easy. I did it with love. And if somebody would be in the hospital because they were extremely sick and they needed to be admitted, I would be there leaving my kids at home, going to, to get on a train or a bus just to connect so I can go on the other side of town to visit the people I take care of because that's how much love I have for it. But it broke me. I was discriminated in, in the most embarrassing and humiliating way in the world that you could ever think of. And all that entire time, my boss, my team leader would tell me, don't respond to this family when they are kissing you out because you are African and if you respond, they're going to think you're aggressive. I believed that. I never responded. I, I, I stood right in front of the people that were insulting me and didn't say nothing when I was discriminated. When you watch Facebook and social media about how people and discrimination is going on around the world, it's so unbelievable to actually think that it will happen to you. It's not, it's not something that you move on from easily. It bugs you. It kills you. And then the worst thing of everything is after I did my my police report, the police calling them back, asking them what's the process and the, what's happening with the with the fact that I reported that people are discriminating me at work. The police told me they could not give me any information back. I made the I I did the police reporting, but the same person who is supposed to get the information about their report, the police says you can't get any information about your report. So what did I do? I had to go to the next process. You dislocate. It's like a law thing here in Holland. And I went to that locate, and when I arrived there at that locate, what I heard was really, really embarrassing and shameful. I found out that in that report they say, the people that were discriminating me are dead, so they can't help me further. The case is closed because the people that were doing the discrimination against me are dead. But that was not true. The people that were discriminating me, they just moved on with their life. And they lied about it. So I had to go on Facebook to show somebody that these people were not dead but still living. Then I went to the next proce uh, process. And the next process was to go to the frack visor, like, like the government shop where you just call shop for everything, information, help, what you need and what you need to understand. So I went to the frack visor. And with that man showing him on Facebook about the information of the people living, he opened the case again. He asked the, the officer for justice, the official for like justice, to open the case and they opened the case again and I kept going with this case I thought now it's open I'm gonna push to make sure that I get my justice and justice is served what happened there was the worst thing 
we got to sit down with people from the company to sort this thing out, to talk, so they can hear what really happened. And when I went there, the company, Lawrence itself, didn't even have the papers that they were giving me, making me things to sign. That's something I forgot. They were making me sign papers, scaring me, scaring me to not talk public about this. I made videos as evidence so that the world, you people out there could see how black people and other people from other cultures are treated. I made the video and my boss called me for a meeting and said, you have to delete that video that you, you made. And all of this was done out of manipulation. My boss asked somebody to come and talk to me so they could just get information out of me and not to help me with my psychological problem of the fact that I was discriminated. So what did I do? I went on. And when I spoke to those people from my work, my, the group of the bosses, the management, when I spoke to all of those people, they didn't know what was happening and some things they didn't even have the right information for and some things were lies. The company just they made it look like they have done everything to help me and protect me, but which was never right. The biggest problem is that I had to quit my job and stop loving the, the thing that I went to school for in this country. And that broke me. That made me feel like I was nothing. Here I am, just had a baby. Instead of being so happy and only having the greatest happiness of emotions, the other emotion of just being treated like that just comes back on top. I'm waiting two years here for this case. The Dutch government knows that the, drive, the, the, the company made a mistake. The police knows that this was not right. Society says it doesn't agree with discrimination. But yet nobody does anything about it. Today I decided to make a video both in English and Dutch. And I'm going to share it on Facebook because I want to hear what, what all of you think. I want to understand. As a Zambian, I know that there are Dutch people living in my country and they do have a better life than I do because Zambian people are going to be more kind and open no matter what. They, they will open the door for you. Because cultural people are all about together. We are not perfect, but we don't judge to that extreme. Now I'm that girl that's always angry, that woman that's always mad. That looks at her husband and thinks, why would people treat me like that? And you married me, we don't see no race, but other people still race. You can't answer other people's question, but you can answer your own question. If I help you and I don't see that you're white and I'm taking care of you, doing what you, I need to do for you. What's the problem with you seeing that I'm black? What's that? I'm speechless. I'm numb. Broken. I just didn't lose a job. I lost the best side of me. The best happy side of me. And I allowed people to, to treat me the way they wanted to treat me. And in Zambia, I would never stand for somebody talking to me like that. But I did in Holland because I thought it's my job. I have to be professional and my company will protect me. But where's the same company that was supposed to protect me? Where was the police who were supposed to show me that justice works not only for white people, but justice works for black people as well? <laughs> and everybody is running around playing games and playing tricks and not telling the truth. And that pisses me off.
it pisses me off because I didn't ask for it neither did I deserve it this is my story it's so big than how I explain it in a short time but it's so big how a Dutch company is going to go to protect its its discrimination in the company more than the way it protects the people that do their work for them with so much love and respect and dignity. Lawrence protected the people who discriminated me. Lawrence lied to the police about the people who are discriminating me being dead. Lawrence did not tell the truth that I, I asked to quit my job three times in the three months I worked there because of the behavior of the family and what was happening to me. Lawrence did not say that they put me in a different department. Every time that family came to visit, I had to go and sit in a different group. Lawrence did not tell that truth. Lawrence also didn't tell the truth about, they said that we are going to, to stop this case going to the police so that we can go in mediation to talk about it with the family. Lawrence didn't live up to their truth. When we went for the mediation to talk about the discrimination, what was happening with this family, you get a, a person, a, 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 somebody who is supposed to speak to you in confidence. I get a, a, somebody who I spoke to in confidence, and that person went back to my team, lied to my boss, and just thought everything I, I, I said, including the fact that I had pictures and videos made for evidence and everything. Lawrence allowed that woman to ask me to delete those videos. I was asked to delete any and every evidence I had against this case. And I did. And the, the company didn't even help me to tell me, don't quit your job, stay, stay, stay here and we try to find another way for you. No, they let me quit my job so they can put me in problems. And in the end, Everybody moved on and nobody cares about the black woman. Nobody cares about a black woman. <laughs> the story of a black woman is always trying to fight, proving, breaking chains and breaking walls. And she can break a lot of them, but when you break her, it takes the hugest one. You break her and she's just down like that. So I need help. Help from anybody that's going to see this video, even if it's not recorded in the best way. Help to make me understand and tell me, is it right? Is it right? Because I don't think it's right at all. And what scares me the most is that there are a lot of black girls that are going through what I'm going through here in Holland and they can't speak up because the way they treat you when you open your mouth, it changes your life. Instead of being the victim, you become the enemy. They don't want to accept that discrimination is going on. They do everything they can do to protect discrimination here. You could be in a bus and somebody discriminates you. Believe me, one of the out of the 100 Dutch people, maybe 10 people will stand up to say something. The rest will never say anything. They will watch you get discriminated and humiliated right then and there. They say, don't, don't mind other people's business. Keep it to yourself. Be professional and all of that. But to all of you, my black people that are living in Holland, how long, how long do you keep quiet and being mad inside? How do we not make a change that this behavior in the Zorok stops? 
because it's just not Lawrence. There are so many companies that are letting discrimination happen to black girls, to Muslim girls. And I, I'm going to speak about it because I have lost. You can't make me lose what I've already lost. I lost everything already, so you can't break me more. You can't. Because I don't want to do that work again. And I don't want to think about the four years I spent to go to school just to do this right. And black people, when somebody, a friend, talks to you about discrimination, take it serious. Don't take it like a joke, because we sometimes think it, we look for attention that we're big petty when we talk about what we feel. <laughs> Let's be more accommodative, more caring, more understanding, more patient, especially Zambian people. Be more compassionate and caring to one another when a sister tells you they are going through something like this. Take it serious. Because when people treat you different because of, of your wrong dress, you can go back in the house and change the dress. When people treat you like they don't like your hairstyle, you can go and cut your hairstyle and do whatever you want. But if people don't like you because of your race, you can bleach that a thousand million times, but you still remain the black woman or Muslim woman that you are. So this is my story of what's really happening in Holland. Whether you do something about discrimination, you fall back because politicians here find it a joke to make fun of black people and we black people just sit around we don't do so much about things we watch them on tv we hear them on radio but we don't do so much about it because in holland there's a system of fear they put they inflict so much fear in you so you don't go forward but i have gone forward and i'll keep going forward so if there's somebody who sees this video, they have a TV program, a radio program, you want to hear my story in full details, you want to see the papers and everything, I am ready for it. I want Lawrence to take responsibility for what they have done because this is not over. It's two years ago and for them it's over, for me not. Because I was the black woman they were spitting on at my job people spitting on you at your work can you believe that no <laughs> it's not the way it's supposed to be it has shut me down from my social life i don't do nothing social and exciting because i am stuck in this bubble i don't trust people i don't even let people in my life anymore because it just seems like the world is so unfair. We all get what we deserve. I don't deserve that. Because no matter what anybody says, for the people who knows me as Rachel Botta, people who have seen me grow up, they will tell you one thing. I have the biggest heart and compassion for humanity and people always, always. Even in Holland, people would tell you, people I take care of would tell you, I go beyond and above out of my means and ways to do my job right. That's why I don't deserve this. And that's why I speak about it. Share this video. Maybe there are other black people who want to talk to me and together we can go in front and try to change this mentality, this, this behavior of treating black people like shit in the Zorok. And then everybody says, don't take it, don't take it too personal. When somebody is attacking you on your race, that's personal. That's personal. If you say you don't like me because I'm black, that's personal. I don't have a problem with myself being black. And if you have a problem with me being black, that's your problem. You hear me? That's your problem. 
Keep that problem to yourself. Don't bring it here. Don't do everything you need to do to break me because you can't fix yourself. That's problem. This discrimination going on around the world, I know about it. But it doesn't stop looking like around the world when it happens right to you in your face, at your work, in Holland. And Dutch people act like it didn't happen. I'm done with this. I'm done with people telling me, keep your mouth shut. Don't talk about this and don't tell anybody about it. No, I will tell now. I kept quiet. It didn't bring me nothing. I did everything that the government says I should do here. Get a job, go to school. Never gotten any social free money from the government from the time I entered this country. I worked for my money. My husband has never been a boy that has been on a, on a Zambian, on, on, a, on a government budget. No, his whole life has never been on a government budget. The only thing that is gotten from the government is what we all get, what every Dutch person gets, health insurance and education help. All of us get that at a certain age. My husband has never been the boy that has to, a man that has to wait for the government to feed him. He worked hard and I worked my butt off, go to school, learn the language, do what I needed to do. And then you come and treat me like this. And then when I try to protect myself, you even block me and do lies and manipulate and, and just all of these tricks you do. Don't make me sit here and think I'm just going and, and you think I'm just going to take it. It's not going to be like that. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to talk about the truth. I'm not afraid to open up about this because it closes my world. It affects me. It affects my children. They don't get the best mother out of me because I'm that girl, that woman that's still stuck on that thing there. And it's time to do something about it. And if I'm going to be put on the blacklist of people because I'm speaking about this, I don't give a damn because somebody out there is going to hear this. And for you Zambian people that are going to look at this and you're going to go, oh, she's been complaining. Go kiss your ass. Kiss your ass. Don't kiss mine. Kiss yours. You allow one of yours to be killed because you want to fit in a society. I would never do that. I was never raised like that. I was raised to stand for the truth. And I'll keep standing for the truth and fighting for the truth and the right thing. And the only thing that pisses me off is I never got my justice. The email you sent me, Lawrence, if you, somebody from Lawrence is going to watch this, the email you sent me to apologize and say you're going to change your laws about how you treat black people in the Zorro, fuck you, because you will never do that. I don't need an apology. I need you guys to face your truth and say what happened. Be real. That's the only way you and me can ever be in a conversation in a good way. Because we will never be in a good way in a conversation. I look at Lawrence as a good bed drive. Good bed drive. A bitch of a bed drive. An evil company. A company made to just protect secrets and not protect people who work for them. Well, not me. You took your, 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 your testing on me on how to treat black people. Fine. But the same testing you took is going to teach you on how you really, really going to treat black people in this country. You go learn. You go learn. <laughs> the world is so... We're talking about America discrimination. Come back here. Come and see what is happening here in Holland and the fact that there's a language barrier. I wish you black people would understand the language. Then you would see the level of discrimination here. It's big. It's in everyday's life. It's in family. It's in friends. It's how friends treat you. It's how family treats you. A Zambian family gonna hold hands and, and take care of a Dutch person when they come in their family. A Dutch family won't do that. Because they just, they don't grasp it like that. Not all families do that. So to get a job and be treated like that is not right. And because I believe in my children and I believe in everything I do, I'm doing something about it. 
Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. It's a girl, Lella Matams, also known as Galopa Z. If you enjoy more of my stories, stay tuned to my YouTube channel.